Good news everyone, Linode has added a lot more one clicks. I love this because it's sort of turning into an organic marketplace of open source stuff. They've added new VPN providers, and some of them are a little strange. You would think, wait, what's going on with this? So Ryan's got one for you to look at here. It requires a subscription. Okay, well it doesn't require a subscription. The first user is free, and then additional users require a subscription. We did a tutorial on raw and naked WireGuard on Linode, which is completely free for an unlimited number of users. You should check that out. What sets this apart is that you can do things like Active Directory integration, which is mm, not a lot of fun to do out of the box on a distribution like this. So until a fully open source distribution pops up that does this, this is really for corporate customers that just want uh, one, somebody for support, and two, uh, somebody that they can blame in case Active Directory integration goes wrong. So let's take a look at this VPN provider and just know that the thing that makes it interesting is the service and things like Active Directory integration, which is you know tricky to do out of the box with WireGuard, a little tricky because of the whole authentication mechanisms thing. Yeah, you'll see. Hey, we are back to check out another Linode One Click. We're gonna check out the Marketplace and we're gonna check out Warp Speed. I'm not a fan of this one so far. I've had a lot of issues with this one so far. We're gonna take a look at a little bit more of that as we do the install. I'm gonna provide a, uh, an admin email, an admin password, that'll be for the GUI, I believe. I have tried this without giving it a DNS. I tried it just with the IP address. The stack script does not install like that. And again, we'll take a more of a look at that later. But I'm definitely gonna give this a DNS name because I'm not sure if it works without it. We'll do a shared CPU with a nanode because it's just a VPN. It needs to be nice and cheap. And uh, give it a root password. That should be everything we need. Take note of these fields. These are the advanced options. I don't think they work like they should. Let's create the Linode. Ah, I've got to select a region. We will do Atlanta. And here we are. Once the provisioning and boot process is done, we will visit this IP address with the root username and the password that we just set from previous screen. So right now I am waiting for this to provision because I want to show you something. I want to show you something that I've learned that is really great and it's uh if you've watched any of the other linode videos it's actually a, a wonderful thing but it's really annoying and this has to do with communication and user interface this is an excellent lesson in user interface because when you create a linode it doesn't really give you a lot of information all right now we're booted probably ssh is not up yet but i want to catch this just as soon as ssh comes up There it is. And you can see this is taking quite a long time. All right, here we're in. We're gonna take a quick look at this directory. Ah, yes, okay. Check out stack script there. Now, every time I've done a Linode one click, what I've done is I've set up my one click and as soon as it was provisioned and booted, I jumped in, in here and started looking around. And I saw the stack script. And if you look at the stack script, it's pretty obvious that uh, it's a script that's going to install what you want to be installed for you. But here's the here's the thing, chat. I actually can already tell that that changed a little bit. The files are changing. Why are the files changing? Where did secrets come from? Well, the dirty truth is that this Linode is not provisioned. In fact, I would give them 15, 20 minutes after you launch a one click to actually provision the Linode. The UI should never give you the IP address before this is done, but it does. And I've actually worked with Linode before where I've had to put the scripts back together a little bit. And I'm like, hmm. So what I was running to over and over with this one is this stack script. If you looked here, the, the constants here, these wire speed constants, were never getting filled in. What's supposed to happen is you're supposed to put in those 
uh, optional details on the GUI. And eventually the script will use what you put in the GUI to swap it out. So I was running it and I was saying, hey, I got no host. I've got no admin email. I've got no admin password. And I had to go into the script myself and set those constants, which I thought was a problem with their scripting, but it's not a problem with their scripting. It's a problem with their user interface because what tipped me off with this is that apt was still installing things when I was trying to run the script myself. So you really, you got to give this thing time. You got to let it run for, I would say a solid, again, 15, 20 minutes to let it do what it needs to do. Eventually, when this is fully complete, that stack script will be gone. It will have automatically done everything that I thought I had to do, which is weird because it was like, oh, one click. Well, I, it's more than just one click. No, it's not. But it's one click and wait a whole lot of time. So uh, we'll take a look at this once it's done. But in fact, you don't actually have to connect via SSH here if you don't want to in this process to get warp speed up and running. The script will do it all on its own if you wait long enough. So here we are, let's take a quick look after we've given this thing uh, a solid amount of time to go ahead and finish its total provisioning. Notice the stack script is gone. And because I set the, uh, well, this was the default, but I know the folder that it was gonna install into. And if we go into wire speed, like differentiate between warp speed and wire speed here. Uh, we have a config file. We have some DB files. This is that config file actually has all the stuff that we set up in the GUI. So I think this is done now. And uh, yeah, very interesting. Learned something about Leno that I didn't know today. And that is, you gotta give them some time. So you, when you're trying out your own warp speed here, you can skip the SSH step and we can go directly to the, uh, the domain. Now, by the way, we did set up a quick domain, a subdomain on level one text and pointed that IP address to the IP for uh, this Linode. I'm not gonna go through that. I assume that most of you know how to set a DNS record. And uh, let's check it out. And here we are. We actually uh, didn't need to do the SSH step at all. You can go straight to your uh, DNS that you set up, assuming that you pointed this DNS toward the IP address and gave it time to propagate and all that. You could, of course, set your host file. If you don't want to actually set up a DNS for this thing, you could use your host file to simulate it. Uh, this is the email, admin email and admin password that I set up in the GUI earlier. And I'm going to sign in. Welcome to Warp Speed VBN. I agree to the terms of service. I suppose that I do. And here we go. can set an IP range. Uh, we'll, we'll deal we, we can have Cloudflare here. That's fine. Sorry for the notification sounds. And we want to route all traffic. Yeah, that sounds good. All right. We don't want IPv6. I'm not going to worry about that right now. And we will do uh, client to client. Sounds good. We're only going to connect one client, but that's fine. DNS leak protection sounds excellent. Uh, that port seems good. We're not running anything else here. Uh, that all sounds good. And, oh. Oh. Really? I have to sign up? Oh, how exciting. We're subscribed to a personal plan. Now we got to set up a client. Ah, it took me a minute to try and figure out what was going on here because I was trying to find the keys in here because I was trying to write my own WireGuard config for this. Uh, that is not how you do it. It is not super straightforward. You have to create a user that's not your admin email. Oh wait, I've already created this user. 
Right. So once you've created another user, you then have devices. You have to define each device. This is actually a, kind of a subscription control kind of thing because they're not going to let you use more than one device. So let's say we're going to connect from Windows 10 and Windows and add a device. And this is the critical part, WireGuard config. We can download a WireGuard config. And that is going to give us an easy way to set up the client. So now let's move over to the WireGuard client. I already have it installed because uh, I, I did a previous WireGuard tutorial on the node. If you need to, just go to the WireGuard site and download the client for whatever operating system that you're going to use. The, I think this setup should be universal. Now that we have our WireGuard client ready, we just need to import our tunnel from a file. And we have this file that we downloaded just now from the, uh, the web GUI there and should all be set up for us. Everything should be set the way that you want it. Activate it and boom, there we go. We have traffic. Oops, I don't want that one. I want that one. There we go, warp speed. So let's head over to an IP check and hey, wouldn't you know it, no IPv6, but our IPv4 is coming from Atlanta, Georgia, which is where we set it up, and it's coming from Linode LLC. So we are now tunneling through our uh, Linode that we just set up as our VPN. Wow, what is my IP? It has a lot of ads that I don't usually see. That's disgusting. So there you go. Pretty quick way to set up a WireGuard VPN. If you go back and you look at the other WireGuard video, you can compare how much easier this is. Now there is that registration. It will let you use one user and two devices for free, but there's a subscription for doing the other stuff. So eh, maybe you like the convenience of it, but pretty cool little service, especially if you want a little temporary VPN, you know, maybe you want an IP address that you're only gonna ever do one thing on cost you six dollars or less so there you go we've got a couple more videos like this coming up for one clicks that caught our attention were there any one clicks that caught your attention you don't even have to be a linode customer just say hey there's this in the one click installer let us know and we'll take a look at it and try to do a video now there's some other vpn providers that don't even give you a single free instance that requires a subscription you know it's up to you to do the math there on the value add is it worth a subscription? Because WireGuard is completely free and open source. You can get a lot of mileage out of WireGuard. But in this case, they actually do give you some pretty valuable extras, like the single sign-on stuff. So, I don't know. It just depends on, you know, if you're a customer and you need that kind of thing. Now, uh, we've got uh, Waza, Wazoo, Waza, Waza. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. We've got a video on that coming up for sure. Maybe a couple other VPN providers, but... I really like Linode for the one-two punch of, you know, a really lightweight, small, inexpensive Linode in the cloud as a front end for your ultimate home server running, you know, petabytes of media up to. Uh, I'm Wendell, this is Level 1. I'm signing out. You can find me in the Level 1 forums. But, uh, yeah, bring, come to the forums if you want to discuss some other one-clicks or you have a larger plan or if you're using something like that or you have a workflow or a really nice home server, let us know what you're doing because we might do a video on something like that or say hey look at this person he's doing something really cool he's got all these recipes and his books and stuff i don't know i'm signing out you can find me there mm -hmm.